Hey friends, this is Jordan with O and Co Games. My team, Noah, Ray, and myself are making a pixel platformer that is focused on satisfying levels of difficulty and consciously crafted storytelling. The game is called Tethergeist and welcome to our devlog. Now call me ignorant, but there was a phrase Noah used with me recently that I had never heard before. Eat the frog. What an unpleasant experience that would be. Slimy, meaty, nasty. So what does it mean to eat the frog? Well, the legendary American author Mark Twain once said Said that if you had to eat a live frog, do it right at the beginning of the day and nothing worse can happen to you for the rest of the day. Knock out the hardest thing on your to-do list first. Translating that to game development it means that if you have a task that has been looming over you and it feels like it will be as uncomfortable as eating a frog, do it now. As far as my relationship with Tethergeist goes, frogs pop up all the time. And honestly, I've gotten better and better at, well, eating them. Things like the pause menu, save systems, and bugs I've been procrastinating. Some of them are pretty mundane tasks that I won't bore you with in a devlog, but others are things that I think are worth bringing up. So here's my devlog on some tasks as of late that were like eating the frog. It's an acquired taste. The first frog on the list is the pause menu. It's still a work in progress, but currently all of the core functionality is there. Using a tutorial from good old Sean Spaulding, I created the functionality to pause the game with an overlay, then I mocked up some flows for how I wanted the pause menu to work. Noah and I bounced some ideas back and forth until we landed on this solution here. We have a main menu that branches into other menus that let you edit things like audio levels and control bindings. The main menu can also be used to reset the player to the checkpoint or skip cutscenes. Now the control bindings menu was something I had been dreading for some time. Since I had to rewire a lot of my code to use global variables, it was going to take a bit more effort than I'd have hoped for, not to mention Noah had to generate artwork for each one of the buttons. That and it just wasn't as exciting as making new mechanics or designing levels. But it's like one of the most important parts of the pause menu, so I'm glad we finally ate the frog and got it working. As part of the control binding menu, I also added a few special options that we noticed were commonly requested in our playtests. Things like being able to adjust the spirit's speed and decide on a toggle versus hold release function for splitting. There's still a lot we want to do with this pause menu, like include accessibility options and graphic settings, but for now it's in a pretty good spot. The next frog on my list was the pain attack sequence. Our main character, May, has a disability that includes episodes of immense pain. We got a basic foundation down for the pain attacks she experiences, but they still just don't feel organic. It kind of comes on suddenly, and players are often more confused by the experience than feeling any sort of immersion in the story or empathy for our character. Noah and Ray have a solid vision for how they want these attacks to go, and while it's still a work in progress, we've done a lot to try to make these experiences more realistic. Now the pain slowly comes on as May walks forward, and the player can tell something is starting to go wrong before the more radical parts of the attack come on. I have a feeling we'll be refining this for a while until we get it just right. In the meantime, we'll be releasing what we have done in our next build, and we will for sure be gathering playtest data to see how it lands with players. There were a bunch of other tiny tasks we've completed as of late that I think are worth noting as well. We added a speedrun timer, implemented all of the dialogue we had planned for our existing NPCs, adjusted character physics based on playtest data, things like making the down button increase your fall speed or tightening up player deceleration. We made a 30 second gameplay video for our Steam page, fixed tons of bugs, which is of course still an ongoing task. We implemented a rudimentary save system, wrote a lot more music, designed sound effects, which I'll probably make a whole devlog on soon, and we at least started working on optimization for areas like the hometown where we've seen dips in our frame rates. Anyway, that will wrap things up for now. Noah, Ray, and I recently scoped out our next six months, and we have a lot of really exciting things coming soon. Things that are going to require me to end this video and get back to work on our game. Even so, I still wanted to check in with all of you and give you an update on how development has been going. We are really sinking our teeth into this project, and we're so excited to show you what we have planned. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe, join our Discord server, and wishlist Tethergeist on Steam. We even have a build you can playtest for free on our Steam page. All of the links you'll need are in the description below. Thanks for watching.